It's cords and coffee on a Southwest Missouri wintry mix. It's not too bad. I used to live in Michigan and that my friends is another level. Holler if you're from Michigan or have lived through that kind of snow. This is just kind of a um, sort of slick. Ha! Who we got in here? Look at that. Look at that. You got you a Spencer. You got you Elijah. Did you guys color coordinate today? What? Did you color coordinate today? Try. Well, looking good. Let's pick us out a guitar. I want to talk about talk about some music theory now before you turn the darn thing off I had a comment the other day that somebody said over my head I don't want to call out who because I love you and the thought of anybody feeling left behind that breaks old Nate's heart so what we're gonna do we're gonna grab a guitar and we're gonna go upstairs to the cabin and we're gonna talk about some theory you can use I'm talking about some Swiss Army knife kind of theory I'm talking about some MREs meal ready to eat music ready to enjoy kind of music theory nothing too complicated but I, I promise you if you get a hold of this it's a game changer it's a game changer for me I'm gonna grab this guitar right here silver sky moon white sort of in honor of the snowy sleety wintry mix that we're having today which is totally fine. We're gonna walk all, I'm gonna take you all the way up to the cabin, all the way up there. We're gonna walk by the road office, people in there doing things, boom. And then who we got here? Museum. And then we're gonna, there's an elevator, elevators. Anyway, here we go. I don't know if you guys have ever seen this part of the store, but I'm gonna show it to you. I'm gonna try not to be out of breath once I get up there. But this is where we do our recitals. This is where we do uh, meetings. And this is where I've been filming Chords and Coffee, along with a lot of other demos. I'm sure you'll recognize it. The old recital hall. Look back here. The veil has been lifted. Mystique gone. I don't know if it's a good idea, but here we are. And look, I'm using a katana. Nothing crazy. I'm going to use a... Um, uh, Electro harmonics. Uh, what is that? A canyon looper. Hello. Here we are. Okay. No one left behind. So when you take a look at any given key, we're going to pick the key of C, and you spell it. What do I mean by spell it? Well, like this. C, D, E, F, G, A, B, and then C again. Do you know your C major scale? If you don't, I'm gonna show it to you real quick. We're gonna start on the third fret of the A with your uh, index, or excuse me, your middle finger. Let me adjust this phone real quick. There we go. Boom. Middle finger, third fret, right, of the A string. Pinky on the fifth fret of the A, right? And yes, the fingers do matter. You'll find out why later. Just if nothing else for the ergonomic, just muscle memory part of it. So middle on the third fret of the A, pinky on the fifth fret of the A, D string, index finger, second fret, middle finger, third fret of the D string, pinky on the fifth fret of the D, G string, second fret, index finger, and then ring finger, fourth fret of the G, and then pinky on the fifth fret. So three on the A, five on the A, two on the D, three on the D, five on the D, on the G string, second fret, and then fourth fret, and then fifth fret. And you want to pick down, up, down, up, down, up, best you can. There's also another way to play it. I'm going to show it to you real quick, but we're not going to linger on this. So eighth fret, and this we're going to do, it's three notes per string. This is super handy long term, but for right now, let's just kind of gloss over it really quick and then we'll move on to these chords. Eight, 10, and 12. Now, when you get up here like this, if you feel uncomfortable because you're trying to have your thumb creep up over, change the position of your thumb, friends. Put it more towards the middle of the neck as if you were doing this, right? So it's almost like, and you can move it around, but when it gets comfortable and you're not hurting anymore, you found where your thumb belongs, okay? So eight, 10, 12 on the low E. Eight, 10, 12, got it? Then on the A, guess what? Eight, 10, 12, right? 
you can already tell like okay wait a second right and then on the d string nine ten twelve okay so nine ten twelve and then guess what on the g nine ten twelve this is a two octave scale so 9, 10, 12, 9, 10, 12, 9, 10, 12, 9, 10, 12, on the D and the G. And then 10, 12, 13, okay, on the B string. And then you can also go 10, 12, 13 on the high E. So that one, that one is the one that's built for speed because you're, there's something about the three note per string, especially for what they call legato, which is where you pick it once and then hammer on. Of course, I picked the hardest one. Or it wants to go fast, right? And also, if you um, when you get to these upper strings here, instead of doing uh, index, ring and pinky, I'll do index, middle, and ring. Anyway, I'm not warmed up. I just walked in from the cold, literally. Uh, but it's, it's, a, um, it's a handy thing. Now, back to this music theory thing. Stay with me. This is really good. This hopefully will change your life. Key is C. We just did it. C major scale, right? If you take each one of those notes, I even wrote this down. This is how big of a deal it is. I have been moved to pen and paper. There are the chords in the key of C. How are these chords constructed? And I, if, if, if you need a PDF of this, just let me know. I'll get you one, okay? So each one of these chords is a one, a three, and a five. Where am I getting that? Well, one, two, three, boom. One, two, three, four, five, boom. So that's how you make a C chord. Think of the, think of the key is a key has a specific collection of notes, and those notes are colors, right? The chords that you construct in that key, not talking about songs, talking about keys, talking about, honestly, this is the math of music theory, right? And that's not an ugly word. This is just, um, it's certain, right? When you talk about keys, there is some specific rules that are, um, it's the law, right? And the theory is how we use these, how we break these rules. Uh, and by breaking, like, you know, songs don't care about all these rules. Songs just care about sounding good, right? But for right now, we're talking about keys, right? So in order to make a triad, you need a one, a three, and a five, okay? And so as I move down through here to this next one on a D, one, two, three, boom. One, two, three, four, five, boom, right? Same thing on this E, one, two, three, there's that G, one, two, three, four, five, boom. And then it wraps around on itself. So when I go to do this F, one, two, three, there's that, and then one, two, three, four, five, right? And so that's how I build these chords. So what are these chords? Well, let's do the cowboy version of these chords. So good old C, index finger on the B string, first fret. Um, G string is open, high E is open also too. So open high E, index finger on the first fret of the B, open G, and then uh, middle finger is on the second fret of the D, and then ring finger is on the third fret of the A. Good old cowboy C, right? Then for D minor, I guess this is still cowboy D minor. So index finger on the first fret of the high E, uh, ring finger on the third fret of the B, and then middle finger on the second fret of the G. With an open D string, not playing the A, not playing the E. But there's an A in there. Yeah, but I'm not going to play. I mean, it sounds okay, but I like having the D. Because D minor, right? Okay, so there's D minor. C, D minor. Now E minor, probably one of the first chords you learn. All you need is two fingers. Low E is open. Second fret of the A string, middle finger, ring on the second fret of the D, and then open strings underneath it all the way down. Right? So now we're on F, first bar chord you ever learn, right? So now you're gonna take your index finger across the top two strings, hold those down. 
uh, middle finger on the, that's on the high E and the B. Middle finger on the G of the second fret. And notice, as soon as you go to this, that thumb wants to creep right on over there. And ain't nothing wrong with that. Don't fight that urge. And then ring finger on the third fret of the D. Infinitely easier on electric guitar if you're playing the home game and you have a choice between acoustic and electric. Electric is much easier. Just throwing that out there. Now for the G. A couple different ways to do this cowboy G. There's this way where you have uh, two Bs. So I'll show that to you. That's going to be ring finger on the third fret of the low E. Uh, middle finger on the second fret of the A. Right? And then open D, open G, open B. And then pinky on the third fret of the high E. Right? Good old, good old cowboy G. Also, here's the other one, the more than words G, right? Right? And this one is going to be middle finger on the third fret of the low E, index finger on the uh, second fret of the A, like that. And then ring finger is going to come over here to the third fret of the B, and then pinky on the third fret of the high E. Everything else is open. That one has two D's in it, so two fives, two fifths of the key, and the other one has two B's in it. They're both nice. I like this one because you get all this. But a lot of times if I'm playing like a rock thing, you want roots and fives a lot. Okay, so there's the G. A minor. Index finger on the first fret of the B. High E is open. Um, ring finger on the second fret of the G. And then middle finger on the second fret of the D. And then A and then open and then the low E is doing nothing. There's A minor. Right? So quick recap. We have this B diminished. What? There's a handful of different ways we can do this. Um, uh, whoops. <laughs> I did the friends in low places. But let's just let's just learn this shape for now. So this is index finger on the uh, second fret of the A. And this is going to be a uh, middle finger on the third fret of the D. Now, pinky on the fourth fret of the G. And you're like, Nate, what about my ring finger? Ring finger is going to go on the third fret of the B. Talk about a chord screaming for resolution. And then go back to C. And that's it. If you played all of those, or if you come back to this video later and you play all of those, that's all the chords the key of C has to offer. That's it. Now again, songs, sometimes songs, especially like folk songs where there's just, or even pop songs nowadays, where there's just like four chords, you know, where you have like, you know, uh, one, five, six, four, you know, uh, and that's it, you know. Um, Sometimes songs will fit neatly inside of keys, but oftentimes, especially in the music that you and I tend to gravitate towards, there might not be a, a perfect fit as far as key-wise when you're trying to learn that song. But this is where we start. This is the foundation. So going back to this, I want to show you this one more time, and here's why. These are basic triads, and a triad is just a three-note chord. There it is, okay? Okay. Something special happens when you add one note to it. Look at here. Now, this is now, I went one, two, three, one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So these are all seventh chords. I'm sure you've heard that before, seventh chords. Well, what the heck is a seventh chord? Well, that's easy. It's just a triad that has the seventh added onto it. Now, um, the seventh, opens up that chord to have a greater degree. And we've talked about this in Chords and Coffee's past, but we're going to talk about it again. No one left behind, right? The seventh chord opens up that, that, uh, that way of thinking about keys to where you have a greater degree of um, functionality as well as all of a sudden you can get a whole lot more return on investment for your scales and your practice time. Stay with me. There's a huge payoff with this. If you don't know where I'm going, 
I am so delighted because I really hope this changes your life. It changed mine. So first things first, I'm going to show you these chords, okay? And we're going to do this. There's a lot of different ways to play this, but we're going to do this just this way. And um, if you guys like this, we can revisit it again. I can show you different inversions for every single one of these chords. But for right now, C major 7. So how are we making this? Bar chord, index finger across the third fret, okay? From the A to the high E, all right? And when you're making a bar chord like this, my, my, my focus is really on the A string and the high E string because these guys are kind of towing the line on the middle strings, right? So A string and the high E string. Right? And if it, if it doesn't sound quite right, just power through it because you have to also kind of build your calluses on your, on your fingers, right? So index finger laying across the third fret. You're going to have your ring finger come down here on the fifth fret of the D. Middle finger is going to be on the fourth fret of the G. And then pinky is going to be on the fifth fret of the B. A cool drink of water. Major seven. C major seven. Now... For D minor 7, we're going to slide up to the 5th fret, index finger straight across the 5th fret. Again, not playing the E on any of this. And what we're going to do is, so again, straight across the 5th fret, and then ring finger is going to be on the 7th fret of the D. The G string is going to be open, or another way to think about it, the bar is getting it, right? Index finger is, or middle finger, excuse me, is going to be on the B string of the 6th fret. So... Now, good news is then this guy just slides up a whole step. So, up here, right? So, this is going to be, so you've got C major 7, D minor 7, now E minor 7. Exact same shape as the D minor 7. Index finger on the 7th fret all the way across. You can play the low E on this one. Right? Index finger all the way across on the 7th fret. Ring finger on the ninth fret of the D. The G is being... Uh, facilitated by this bar here and then middle finger is on the 8th fret of the B and then now F major 7 and this is just like this shape except slid up here so index finger straight across the 8th fret from the A to the high E if, you're, if your hand's starting to get a little crampy just shake it out I'm not here to hurt you friends <laughs> alright so uh, index finger straight across the 8th fret from the A to the high E yeah, ring finger on the 10th fret of the D. Middle finger is going to be on the 9th fret of the G. And then pinky is on the 10th fret of the B. Now as you go up here, it's getting a little scrunchy. So for you uh, big fingered folk, um, you can find a way in there. I'm, I, uh, I took lessons from a guy up in Kalamazoo, Michigan named John Reamer. John, if you're watching this, God bless you. I love you. You taught me more than I could ever repay you for. So thank you for that. John had big hands. And John would get all scrunched up in there. And John can do it. You can do it too. Believe in yourself. Here we go. So F major 7 right there. The next chord. G dominant 7. Looks a whole lot like this F major 7 slid up to the 10th fret. But going to take your middle finger off now when your middle finger comes off and especially when you're this scrunchy a lot of times it's just a natural tendency don't fight it it's good for you for your middle finger and your index finger to sort of form the human capo together right that's a good thing just let it happen so again let me break that down for you so index finger across the 10th fret from the a to the high e ring fingers on the 12th fret of the d uh g is being facilitated by this human capo here the middle is laying on top of the index and then pinky is on the 12th fret of the b now here's where it gets interesting some might do this a minor like this wouldn't be nothing wrong with that however i would like to introduce this shape this shape is um sort of like a shell voicing type shape shell voicings we'll probably talk about that down the road a little bit it's a whole cool concept in of itself. But for right now, check out this shape. So this is going to be middle finger on the A string, 12th fret. Index finger on the 10th fret of the D. And then ring finger on the 12th fret 
of the G. Well, Pink Floyd is what it sounds like, right? Beginning of Shine On Crazy Diamond. Wrong key, but you can hear it. Right? Okay, sorry, I got <laughs> rabbit hole. All right, so uh, ring finger 12th fret of the G, and then pinky on the 13th fret of the B. All right? That's, believe it or not, please trust me, that's a super useful shape. And then finally up here, B minor 7 flat 5. B half diminished. I like saying minor 7 flat 5 because it tells the whole story. This is going to be index on the 14th fret of the A. Uh, ring on the 15th fret of the D. And then middle on the 14th fret of the G. And then pinky on the 15th fret of the B. And then resolve to that C. So, what happens? Nate, you tortured me. My fingers are in flames, just hurting. Here's what happens, friends. And I wrote this down because I, I wanted you to be able to see this. Look inside this C. Do you see what's happening there? Look here. There's an E minor hiding in this C. Look over here at this A. There's a C hiding in this A minor. But wait, there's more. Right here at this D, D, F, A, C, this D minor. Look here. There is inside this B minor 7 flat 5, there is a D minor. It's like a D minor over B, right? As a matter of fact, there is a B diminished hiding inside of this G7. So what ends up happening is you end up grouping your chords into two groups. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to hide this real quick. You end up grouping your chords into, these are your release chords, where you've got a C, an E minor, and an A. Right? I, I can feel it right now. I, I feel like I, I've lost some of you, right? Well, so check this out. So I'm, I've got my little looper here, and let me see if I can, um, let's see. So there's a C major seven. I can play a C major scale. also play E minor pentatonic. I can also play A minor. A minor pentatonic. Right? But I can also, over an A minor, play uh, C major stuff. Hopefully that's not a crappy loop. So check this out. Let me erase this really quick. So let's say, um, let me see if I can do this. So, um, so there's a C major scale. And I'm playing A minor over that. Now I'm gonna play an E. That kind of sounds mysterious and a little tense. And here's a C. Now check this out. Learning to use a looper. You're watching it happen in real time. Check this out. You can also do the same thing over the other chords, okay? So I'm just playing a C major scale at this point and I'm showing you how it fits over these chords. So these are all the tension chords, right? 
D minor, and I made it a nine, so I went ahead and added another notes, and then F major nine, and then G nine, and then B minor seven flat five. I left it just as the four, the uh, the uh, four notes to the chord. I'm just using the C major scale right now, but there's all kinds of stuff you can do. Like so, for example, on this deal here, let me erase this thing really quick. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to play just a, a a G seven thing. <laughs> Kind of thing here. Let's see what we got here. So it's like a little G7 funky thing. Now, over the top of that, I'm going to play a D minor thing. And I'm just playing the 10th fret of the high E, the B. And if I just went. That, that's a, uh, let's see, uh, that's, if, I, if I just did this, you hear the D minorness of that, right? Plus, if I, if I did this, you hear the F major 7-ness of that, right? You hear those chords. But if I go back to this thing here, I'm going to play D minor and F chords, so chord stabs over this G7. this I can also play this B minor seven flat five remember we went by the way this goes all the way back to chords and coffee number one so you can watch that too if you like but listen I'm gonna play B minor seven flat five over this G thing here Is that because I'm first of all because I'm playing up high and the G7 is down low hopefully you're seeing how these chords kind of like can intermingle with each other and make something really interesting and I'll tell you where this comes into play immediately as a guitar player especially if you have somebody that you like to jam with or if you're doing what I'm doing right now just making loops right there'll be a lot of times where there'll be musical situations that come up where you're basically vamping over some kind of static chord thing like that. Lord have mercy in country music and in funk music and in rock and roll. I mean, rock and roll, stranglehold, Ted Nugent, right? You're just sitting there forever. Or like, um, you know, um, I don't know, there's, there's a million and one instance. Like, how about a, like superstition, right? If you're just sitting there and somebody's... That's usually where you end up soloing, right? And you end up, or soloing over the form of the song, right? But most of the time, when I've played that song with the band and they kick it to the guitar player to stretch it because you're trying to get as much, you know, bang for your buck, right? For the, you know, get, trying to stretch the set. You end up soloing over one chord. It happens all the time. We get thrown and thrust into that situation. Well, if you're playing with another guitar player and all of a sudden they do all the cool stuff that's like the normal stuff, wouldn't it be nice to have a few spices in the cupboard that you could reach in there and sprinkle out now some of you might be saying nate i don't even have salt and pepper yet quit you know fancy spices i don't know you know well get this in your hands so here's what you need to do step one get these chord voicings in your hands right and get your ear to accept what an e minor over a c sounds like here's another cool thing to do let me let me erase this loop here so like i don't know if you heard but on the E, playing a C major scale over that E. That was like the most tension, but even then, that could be kind of cool. So if I just went. So I'm gonna play, like start on E minor. So I'm just going down D to D to, to C to B. Mysterious. 
serious, right? Well, what's happening is, in a very... In a very Mr. Miyagi way, as I get my looper, I'm fighting with my looper here. In a very Mr. Miyagi way, I'm trying to sneak in modes, right? All his modes are, as we go back to this thing here, so if I were to just start lining up all basically C major scale underneath this one chord, and then C major scale underneath this D, and then C major scale underneath this E, so on and so forth, Ionian major scale, Dorian. Dorian mode is D is the second of what play that major scale. If you play a C major scale over a D minor chord, that equals Dorian, right? And then Phrygian, right? That's the mysterious one we just did, right? If you play a C major scale underneath this E minor, that's what you get. And then Lydian, you play a C major scale underneath an F major seven, that's what you get. Mixolydian, if you play a C major scale underneath a G7, that's what you get, Mixolydian. Aeolian, if you play a C major scale underneath an A minor, that's what you get. And then Locrian, are you loco? If you play a C major scale underneath a B minor 7 flat 5 or a B diminished, that's what you get. You get Locrian, that's all it is, right? So, I know in the past I've asked you to comment on every little thing. Here's what I would like to ask you to do now. I would love to hear specific questions. All I want to do is help you. Am I an expert on music theory? Heck no. But this little nugget has helped me out a ton. So if there are specific chord progressions or maybe maybe you've got something where you're like, man, I've got this, this song and I never know what to play over here. Here's the chord changes. What would you play? That used to be a game that a lot of times the guys on the sales floor, we would, we would do that. We'd be like, man, what would you play over this chord progression, right? It's just kind of fun to think about. So either that or if, there's, if you would just like for me to go over this again and maybe in a different key, right, other than C, I'd be happy to. So there's the comment I want from you. Where do we go from here? Is there a specific chord progression or is there a different key that you want to hear this unpacked again? I hope y'all are getting encouraged by this. I hope you're having fun watching it and I hope you're hitting the subscribe button and I hope you're sharing these videos. The Chords and Coffee community is growing and that's all thanks to you. I appreciate you and we'll see you next week.